Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. We are at Form Next 2025. This is our fourth year here at the largest 3D printing and additive manufacturing show in Europe. We've got lots of exciting stuff coming up. Stay tuned, see you in the next video. So a quick pause from the video to say a thank you to the sponsor of this video and of the channel, Frozen, and talk about the printer that we've been playing with a lot recently, the Frozen Mega 8KS. The best way I can describe this thing is it just makes big resin projects feel normal. You know when you see a huge model on Etsy or a full-size army and you think, oh, that'd be really good. I definitely can't do that on my machine. That is all fixed by the sheer size and volume you can print with with this machine. The build plate is huge, so we've been doing full trays of minis all in one go, big terrain pieces, chunky props, and it has handled it without any drama. You set it up, you slice it, you hit print, and it just gets on with it. It's really nice not having to chop everything into tiny sections, make inorganic cuts, it, just to try and make it fit. And even though it's a big machine, you still retain all of that crisp 8K detail that you want from resin. This thing does textures on cloaks, little rivets, tiny text, and it all shows up nice and clean, nice and crisp. On the table, in a camera, it just looks sharp. There are some good quality of life bits on this as well. The lid design makes it nice and easy to fit it in normal spaces. The whole printer feels like it's built for people who are actually using it every day and not just for a spec sheet and a bunch of flashy marketing things. If you're thinking about stepping up to a larger resin printer, whether it's for batch commissioning, full printing armies, or just finally doing one giant centerpiece model that you've been putting off, you have to look at the Mega 8KS. Use the link in the video description and a big thanks to Frozen for supporting the channel. Now let's get back to the video. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are at BCN and we are here to take a look at the brand new Omega. So over to you, talk us through a little bit of the specs yeah. and what we're looking at. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce BCN3D. Go for you it. You know, uh, BCN3D is a company that is based in Catalonia, in Spain. We have more than 14 years um, dedicated to, you know, uh, manufacturing 3D printers. So now, today, we are here uh, releasing the, the new model of the Omega 860, the second generation of this printer and it has some cool features that makes it, uh, let's say, perfect for the industry. Uh, if, 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 if we analyze the top features, first of all, I would like to say that uh, we have the IDEX technology, which allows to print two pieces at the same time, but also if you combine this with the big printing volume, up to 60 liters, and the highest speed that we can reach up to 400 millimeters per second, which for, I mean, for technical materials, it's a really good speed, uh, it makes uh, a really good machine for, for the industrial sector. So um, the heated chamber can uh, reach up to 70 degrees, okay? And the MOS, which is the material operation system, can also reach the, the same uh, temperature, 70 degrees, and can run the drying cycle and the recovering cycle of, uh, for, for, for recovering these pools. Okay, so all these pools that you put there will be recovered and we can reduce the humidity of these spools, okay? Um, also, if, if we want to go in deep with the key features of this second generation, which is new, what, what is new on this new machine, is uh, if we start with the print heads, we did some modifications. Now we are able to faster, we are faster cooling down the layer. So for high speed, it's super important. Uh, so we have modified for, for being more accurate, uh, accurate when, when printing. Also the platform, we have removed the glass because with the Epsilon we still are using a, a sheet of, of glass uh, for printing. And now we have a metal wheel plate with the flexible on the top. So the heat transfer, it's uh, super fast and we ensure a perfect, a perfect 
first layer adhesion on every print. Okay. Also, this is the first machine that includes the AI. Okay. We have the Omega system, which is, let's say, represented with this light here, but it's planned to start using it for sending notifications to the customer. So, we will include here a lot of information regarding how to use the machine, how to print new materials, how to run different routines, and we have uh, like a massive, I think it's more than 300 articles in our website explaining how to use the machine and how to print, okay? And we will integrate all this information in the machine. So the learning curve of the customer will be reduced, okay? And um, yeah, for, for this, we have included two new cameras in this machine. The first one is the one that we have on the top. It's used for controlling the print shop, of course, but also it has some AI features like the spaghetti detector or something like that. Also can detect if you leave something there or you have not removed the previous print job, it will detect it and will not run this next print job if there is something on, on the top of the platform. But also, there is another one right there next to the wheel plate that it's pointing for, uh, upwards, okay? So, it is um, a camera that has some kind of AI. It's a uh, tool alignment with machine vision. So, the first pin head, it's uh, uh, positioned on the, on the top of this camera. We can detect, it's trained. It's trained for, for detecting circles, the circle of the nozzle, so we can let's say, move it, the, the first print head, to the right location, and then the other one tries to move to the same position and automatically calculates the offset between the print heads. So for the X, Y axis, okay. it is perfect and it's yeah. fully automated. So yeah. I, I want to be really, generally yeah. speaking, when someone says ah. AI has been integrated into their yeah. machine, what they mean is, is that they're using spaghetti detective and yeah. that's kind of it. There's some level of object recognition, but not really. Yeah. It just recognizes what spaghetti yeah, is. Yeah, that's it. Um, you're actually implementing it at a much more fundamental level. You're almost circumventing the idea of doing closed loop stepper motors, where you're getting, you're, and you're actually having a, a camera with an AI behind it that mm -hmm. is able to yeah. recognize tool head positioning, that's correct. X, y, XYZ positioning, and everything yeah. else to make sure that you aren't making human mistakes that are repeatable and recognizable. That's it. So, yeah. That's really interesting, and so is the idea that you're also incorporating a knowledge library directly into the machine yeah. as well. So how do you how do you access the knowledge library? Is it directly on the machine, or is it uh, in the The point here is that we need to decide if, I mean, later I will explain you all about the cyber, the security of the machine yeah. and the GDPR and everything, but the idea is that the, if the customer uses the machine connected to the vision 3 cloud, yeah. He will have some more features, like for instance this one. They, they will have access through the screen to all this knowledge, all these right. videos, all these okay. articles. Okay. So we still need to decide if we want to. Probably we will introduce some uh, short, um, let's say, articles or information here in the screen. But if the customer wants to have access to all this information, will need to be connected. The machine will be uh, connected to the. So. Connectivity in that regard is really concerning for certain market sectors, right? Yeah. When we're talking about military applications, technology That's and it. IP applications, there is a concern that by going to cloud, you're mm -hmm. exposing yourself to lots of different IP infringement and things like that. Yeah. So are you, there, there are a number of machines that have gone a very different way with it, where they've decided to completely air gap their mm -hmm. machines, it's dumb connectivity, you're still mm -hmm. using USB sticks and SD cards, and you effectively limit the capability of the machine because you're concerned about the security side. Yeah. So you're saying that the way you're implementing that is completely different, a security first cloud based <coughs> Well, it's not uh, completely like this. First of all, we have a machine that it's the no, the no Wi-Fi machine yeah. that doesn't have antenna Wi-Fi, it doesn't have the electronics for getting connected. So of course, if you want to modify the machine, you probably will find a way to do it, but the machine is not able to get connected. Yeah. And we have the other one, which is this one, that uh, we uh, plan to use it with the cloud. But we are using the vcm 3 cloud that, it's one of the, that has one of the highest levels of, of security. We are fully compliant with the GDPR, with the General Data Protection uh, Regulation, and we have a lot of measures for protecting the data of our customers, we have no, we had any uh, problem, any information leak or something like that, yeah. and we ensure that we have all these systems, all these security necessary 
for having this kind of uh, you know security. Okay. Yeah. And so material types. So yeah. at the moment you're printing carbon fiber. We have on our portfolio four materials okay. for the moment. Uh, but in the printer, it's uh, open to third-party materials. Okay. So you can use OER filament. You can also get access to the OFN, which is the Open Filament Network. It's uh, there, there. You can find all the printing parameters for printing uh, filaments from other brands. We have a partnership with them, so we tested their materials. We developed the these, the correct printing profiles for, for using these materials. So the customer can buy this material from, from them and have the, the entire solution and everything ready for printing and all the parameters perfectly configured. And also, if you want to use some other materials, you can come to the screen, you can load it as a custom material and adjust the temperature as you prefer. So okay. it's fully open. To so what are, I mean, what are the technical limitations? So, so how hot does the hot end go? How hot does the bed go? So uh, we have 70 degrees for the printing ball, uh, model. The hot end it's uh, up to 300 degrees. Okay. Okay. The platform uh, 120. Okay. okay. So you're doing PP, carbon fiber, nylon. Sure. They're yeah. all fine. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that you probably wouldn't is peak, pet K, and Alton. Yeah. yeah, we are looking for uh, to find uh, like uh, another solution for the peak. Uh, using a low temp pick, let's say with a third party manufacturer. But yeah, for the moment, we can print the tooling CF, which is polyamide with carbon fiber, mm -hmm. uh, polyamide, high temperature polyamide, and uh, ABS, uh, impact ABS, and the proto material that yeah. Yeah, we use, uh, like our the most, PLA, com the most common say. materials most yeah. people would require. Yeah. If, you're, if you're using Altem or PPSU or something like that, it's a, it's a very specialized space that's using that, and mm. it's not. Yeah. They're, they're, they're very specialized machines. They're basically a printer inside of an oven. So, so, or yeah. an oven inside of a printer, depending mm -hmm. on where you look at it. Yeah. Um, so, okay, fair enough. So, I mean, mm -hmm. a, a very capable and uh, it's interesting that it's open to third party materials as well. Yeah, That's this is something that we, that we always happens. try to keep on, our, on, on all, our, all our machines, are yeah. always uh, open to people. And this also comes in an IDEX as well, this one? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can print it in dual. You know, mixing materials, or you can print in mirror or duplication mode. Yeah. So both both printers will be printing at the same time the yeah. the, the model. So yeah. generally, when you're talking about engineering grade materials, you start to look into um, support materials. So yeah, the correct. hips and dis and dis water dissolvable stuff, PVA and things like that, mm -hmm. so that you can so that you can get those real zero interface layers when it comes to when it comes to support structures. Mm -hmm. And IDEX really gives you a flexibility in that space that's quite hard to come by. There's no purge towers, there's no there's no poop shoots or any of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just direct material that goes through all the time. Um, okay, so then let's talk price. So price. commercial yeah. grade machine. Right, we're not yep. talking about something that's competing with uh, with Creality on this. Uh, so, no, no. <laughs> so this is this is a return on investment case, right? Well, this is a business case for mm. a, a specific machine providing you with very specific capabilities. Mm -hmm. So, what are we looking at with pricing structure with this? Right now, um, we, I mean, I mean, first of all, we are planning to start selling. Well, the, we will deliver the first units of this machine at the end of April. First of May. Okay. The pre-order it's open now, and the price it's twenty-two, uh, twenty-two hundred. Uh, five. Sorry, twenty-two thousand five hundred. If it's twenty-two hundred, yeah, I'm saying I'll buy one. More than one, probably. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, the price is uh, twenty-two thousand five hundred euros. Okay. And I think it's uh, really it's a good price for the features that we are. It's an aggressive price. It's an aggressive uh, price point yeah. for that type of machine mm -hmm. in the market. Yeah. You also have sort of prosumer grade machines and the Epsilon and things like that. Mm. But this is, the Omega's been sort of setting a standard in the industrial side for a while. So to see such a, a, co a complete overhaul, basically, where mm. you've completely redone the hot ends, you've, you've, you've redone a, a multi-material cupboard as well as doing all the upgrades and everything inside. Mm. I mean, how much R and D has not fiscally, but timeline wise, has gone into has gone into getting the the, the Omega. Upgrade. What do you mean? So, how long has it taken you to go from the original Omega to, to, to bringing out the, to the, the second one? version? The yeah. second version. I mean, we have been working on this for the last year or so because I mean, it's the it's the same uh, structure. Yeah. 
uh, we have modified some colors and, and some uh, small things, but the key points, the I mean, we have not been talking about it, but what we also have included the, uh, um, let's say, the uh, active spool control system, which allows to uh, rotate the spool and fit the print head. So the print head is not the only one that is doing yeah. all the effort for for extruding the material. We are feeding the material from the bottom, so it, it will be better for printing in TPU, for instance. Um, so that requires some new sensors. We have a, we have at least three or four sensors for, for every uh, so path of if filament. If it's actively moving the spool, how does it tell the difference between? So I'm, I, I don't know if they're three or five kilo spools you've got on there at the moment. Are they, what do you mean? The, the, the how does it tell the difference between the size of spools? Like if you because if you've got if you've got like a I mean again I'm seeing that's like a five kilo spool. Yeah. Like they're massive. Mm -hmm. But if you were to put a I don't know. If you had, if you were doing a, a, a material that came in a, a one kilo spool, how does it know the difference between the two? Well, the point is that we have a buffer that detects when the filament is uh, the, 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 the printhead is running out of filament, and it sends the it's, signal. It's all done on force sensors, then. So it literally just goes, "I need more material." Yeah, when that's it. Just it. Starts that's it. That's okay, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So even if you are using a small spool or something like that, yeah, yeah, it will recognize it and will know when to apply and, and, and provide more material. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a lot of printers have an issue, which is that you try to keep your tool head really light, which means using a smaller, um, a, a smaller extruder motor, but that then limits the torque that you can do and you're pulling material. And if, you're, if, you've, got, if you've got material cupboards, then you're pulling the material up as well as trying to rotate a five kilo spool, as well as trying to get through the friction that's in the filament path, mm -hmm. trying to then pull that back down again into yeah. a, 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 the force multiplier that goes through all the pulleys and curves yeah. and everything is huge. So having something that actively assists that, so it's pushing and pulling at the same yeah. time, takes a huge load off of the tool head, I mean, which it, means you can move way it, faster. It's completely necessary when you want to print in high speed, yeah. you know? So you are having like a lot of factors here, you want to, uh, to print super fast, you want to extrude a lot, and, and you need something to provide this filament and, and let's say reduce the tension yeah, and, yeah, the, yeah. and the effort that the print head has to do. Yeah, and then it, as you say, when you're trying to print TPUs as well, yeah, yeah, for sure. When, when you, any elastopolymer, any yeah. tugging on an elastopolymer, fundamentally changes its dimension. And when you change the dimension of any filament, you change you change the thermal the thermal properties of how long, how long it takes to try and melt it and everything else, and it causes huge issues. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you've managed to try and solve that through through doing it that way, and it's all done on force sensors, so it understands the load on the filament rather than just trying to arbitrarily spin a spool at a set amount. It's, it's really cool. Well, thank you very much for making the time. Thank Catch you on the next video. See you.